Welcome to the first of two segments of the Orm School end of the year celebration. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, students, faculty, and staff earnestly and skillfully transitioned to remote learning in April. And although the faculty and staff had to cancel a host of events, we just couldn't cancel the Orm School commencement. After a truly amazing year, we decided on a virtual graduation. Empty chairs and a vacant lawn cannot capture our original plans, but we hope we can provide an alternative for our socially distancing community. One slight advantage of our virtual celebration is that viewers will have a permanent record of the people and place called Orm. We are so very proud of the 38 seniors who have met the requirements for a diploma, yet so very sad that the class of 2020 cannot gather with families, classmates, alums, and representatives of the Board of Trustees to celebrate their achievement. The class of 2020 is one of the largest and most diverse graduating classes Orm has ever had. They represent 14 different countries from all major continents. They have traveled domestically from as far as New York City, Chicago, Seattle, and as near as Tucson and Phoenix. They have mastered their ABCs, AP courses, boarding school life, caravans and coffee houses. They have played on some of the best football, volleyball, basketball, baseball, and softball teams over the last decade, produced championships in swimming and tennis, and competed with the top in the state in horse and math competitions. They are heading off to an array of colleges and universities with aspirations and dreams fostered at Orm. We have watched them grow and develop and know they are ready for the next leg in their learning journey. The key indicators of their future success are their collective intellectual curiosity, love of sport, good character, work ethic, team spirit, adaptive capacities, sustainability interests, creative tendencies, and perhaps most importantly, their sense of community based on things they share being greater than those which separate. We are very proud of each individual of the class of 2020, yet most proud of two general types. One that has overcome their teenage insecurities and anxieties, and now heads off to college with self-confidence and inner resourcefulness. And a second type that has minimized their impulsiveness and lapses in judgment to become more thoughtful and wiser. They have emerged at the end of their teenage years as wonderful young adults with great promise. One of the things that makes Orm graduates so very special are the principles developed by Charles H. Orm Jr. over his 42 years as headmaster. The Orm School for nearly a century has focused on providing a transformative education beyond academic preparedness. At last year's commencement, Billy Cardasco, class of 1980, spoke beautifully about Orm's essence, which he believes is embedded in its guiding principles of excellence, tradition, and character. Billy also spoke about a sense of place, a supportive environment, and the importance of abundant experiential learning opportunities. As a timid, self-conscious young boy, it was the Western outdoor challenges he mastered that were the most critical in his transformation. At Orm, he discovered the confidence needed to be his best and to pursue his dreams. 40 years after Billy graduated, members of the class of 2020 are still offered the same experiences. And like Billy, many of them were forced out of their comfort zones and began to develop an inner strength that has prepared them for the inevitable challenges they will face in life. Charlie not only handed Billy a diploma 20 years Earlier, he bestowed a diploma to a group of young boys emblematic of that second type of graduate, those needing to learn from mistakes. Those boys made several poor choices while on a ski trip to Flagstaff. They were given a choice by Charlie between going home for spring break or staying on campus and doing something positive for the community in order to receive their diploma. You see, Charlie believed we all make mistakes and some to a greater degree than others. But in each instance, a learning moment or growth opportunity presents itself. With their own hands, the boys of the class of 1960 
constructed a gathering place dubbed the Club 60. Ron Eldred was one of those boys. Ron's recent passing is memorialized by his brother Ken and his daughter Casey Campbell, class of 1996, in this newly completed pavilion. It is part of our centennial campaign and it should be a welcome addition to the Orm campus. There are a few individuals in every graduating class, including 2020, who might not have received their diplomas because of poor choices. Charlie Orm's belief, however, in the goodness and potential for character development in each Orm student persists and remains at the core of our disciplinary philosophy. Charlie taught that we each have a responsibility for maintaining the wellness of all within a community. His brother's keeper mentality is still integral. His belief in hard work and service for the benefit of the broader community as a path towards redemption persists. For members of the class of 2020, the application of Charlie's philosophy of experiential learning, communal responsibility, and disciplinary consequences with the self-improvement component lives on. The class of 2020 are joining a special breed. All who have entered the barnyard and earned the quarter circle V-bar pin are bonded together, bonded together forever because of their time here at Orm. Congratulations to the members of the class of 2020. We hope you can reach back to your own Orm experiences in ways that bring out your best. We hope you will strive for excellence in all your endeavors, honor traditions of value, and play a role in strengthening character wherever needed. Onward and upward. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the Director of College Counseling here at the Orm School. And I am honored that the class of 2020 picked me to be their baccalaureate speaker because this will always be a special group of people for me. I attended a very typical New England boarding school as a day student for all of middle school and high school. The school started in seventh grade, so six year seniors had been at the school the longest. In my first year at Williston, they built the new campus center and that building was the home to the day students during our time there. The front of the building was perfectly designed for graduations. It had a long ramp leading up one side of the front patio and another long ramp leading down the other side. During graduation, you walked up one side as a senior and down the other as a graduate. It was a beautiful building and a beautiful graduation ceremony. Bagpipes, the whole nine yards. I watched my sister graduate by walking across that stage. I watched my closest friends graduate the year before me on that stage. I had been to five graduations on the lawn in front of our campus center, and as the spring of 2001 approached, it was about to be my turn. But then, on graduation day, it rained. And guess what? We had to have our graduation in the gym. I was devastated. My moment had come and was going to be ruined. I have to admit, the graduation was still pretty nice. I had been looking forward to going down the line of all my teachers from the past six years to enjoy that last hug and the exchange of a final memory or moment of gratitude. As I came to the end of the line of teachers, I realized that my junior and senior year English teacher, Mr. Thompson, was not there. I was shocked. I knew I loved English class before I had Mr. Thompson, but I never thought I would enjoy teaching until his class became my favorite part of the day. Now, I wasn't going to get to say thank you and goodbye. What a disaster. Can you imagine your high school graduation being ruined like this? Oh, you can? 19 years later, and in the middle of a global pandemic, I realized how long it's been since I even thought about my high school graduation. You have it worse, you do. But in 19 years from now, you might be over it. What still stings a little is missing that goodbye with Mr. Thompson. Those goodbyes should not go unsaid. So, class of 2020, those are my final words to you. The baccalaureate speaker usually tells a story from his or her life or from history or literature and then relates it to a lesson for the graduating class. That's what you're supposed to do. Well, my story is that I love you all the way you are. 
And the lesson is that you should keep being that way no matter what happens. It might rain on your graduation day. You might even lose the entire spring of your senior year because of a global pandemic. But you'll be fine. You are not the class of COVID-19. You are the class of 2020. And 19 years from now, I bet you'll remember the stories and the relationships more than the circumstances. Thank you for being you. Thank you. Greetings, Orm School Class of 2020, and congratulations on your high school graduation. You see, that's, that's your cue when you're watching this virtually to clap, yes. Everyone clap virtually. You can play this multiple times and keep clapping. I hope that this finds you safe and well with the ones that you care about and that can share in your achievements. However, in the event that you're quarantined in an undesirable location like a funky, weird hotel or perhaps your brother or sister's room, I hope that you have a strong Wi-Fi signal for Netflix, an endless supply of gummy bears, and that you can still get a take and bake pizza. You see, this is actually a moment for you to reflect, to enjoy, and to look to the future. I am honored to join you here today. It is a privilege to stand in the same spot as Ronald Reagan, Barry Goldwater, Sandra Day O'Connor, and Jimmy Stewart to deliver, hopefully, prophetic remarks like they did. Maybe not Sage, we'll find out. Now I can virtually hear the excellence, tradition, character motto being whispered in my ear by these ghosts of commencement speakers past. Now for you seniors, I've had the pleasure of engaging with each of you over the past year. We've had a unique collaboration between ORM and ASU's School of Sustainability, and it has been wonderful. We've discussed much in our visits, always with the light air, but we've covered deep material and concepts that are far beyond that of most of your peers. I've constantly been impressed with your perspicacity, zeal, and your drive. And it's with that that I want to share with you one last lesson. This one's going to focus on three very easy points. You ready? Here they go. Being intellectually curious, practicing kindness, and being a bold agent of change. Now, being intellectually curious. This is where I and other graduation speakers around the world invoke in you the need to keep on learning, to keep questioning, to keep seeking answers. A life lived for learning and knowledge will provide endless dividends of happiness and opportunity, not just for you, but for our shared world. Now, not long ago, we admired and we revered intelligence. It was something we aspired to as a collective community and body of people. Now, I lament a bit to say that you enter a world where intellectualism and acumen, mind you, not necessarily in the form of formal education, but rather in terms of an open-mindedness for rational discourse and debate, seem to be playing a diminishing role. Now, I challenge you, warriors, to buck this trend of simplifying things and embrace opportunities of deeper thought and a contemplative orientation. Your intellectual curiosity also needs to be turned inward. I challenge you to constantly explore who you are and who you want to be. The great American transcendentalist Ralph Waldo Emerson, I think, hit this one right on the head. What lies before us, what lies behind us, are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. All right, see, that was easy. Number one, done. Think deeply, it's a good thing. Number two, practice kindness. Now we've talked a lot about this one over the past year. Kindness is one of those virtues that our parents taught us early, but we so often readily discard. See, being kind extends beyond how you treat the person next to you. It encompasses a broader mentality of thought. Let's use your graduating class as an example. As a whole, your class embodies a global perspective from 14 countries in every major continent. Remember, we're going to have to get Sir Sanborn on getting folks from you know, Antarctica, you know, one of the two next year. Now, when you look at the geopolitical and nation state politics and actions between your shared countries, some interesting things come to light. 
They don't always practice kindness to one another. But you're different. I've seen in each one of you a light and a love that is inspirational. I've seen the way you connect with each other. I've seen how national origin, gender, sexual orientation, religion, political ideologies are not things that divide you, but rather how they bring you together in fidelity and community. You, warriors of Orm, are leading by example and showing that caring for people is not a weakness. It is a strength. Keep this up. You'll find that kindness is a transformative thing for you in your mindset. Kindness will not only impact others, but more importantly, and I promise it will irrevocably change you. Great. Number two, done. We've talked about curiosity and kindness. Now let's move on to being a bold change agent. Now your senior year certainly has been an eventful one. And from the looks of it, it's going to continue to be. You're entering into a world comparative to alumni even 10 years ago, far more complex, far more interconnected, and far more daunting. We need people like you to stand up. We need you to have agency for the world around you. You cannot sit idly by and wish for a better future. You must be bold. You must make change. Ferdinand Magellan understood this. That's right, that 15th and 16th century Portuguese explorer. Remember, he was that fellow that circumnavigated the world for the first time. Good sailor, good naval officer. A guy like that probably had one heck of a plan, right? You'd be wrong. In, in short, his grand vision, right, with the commandment of the King of Spain and the providence of God, was to point the compass westish and keep on going. So he makes it to South America. He hits the tumultuous Straits of Magellan. You see, when you're bold and you do things for the first time, you get to name them. And then he comes into the Pacific, which he also named, sensing a thread here, and he eventually makes it to the Philippines. Now, from here on out, things don't go too well, personally, for him. He died. Only one out of the five ships that set sail actually returned. 15 out of 350 sailors came home. He was reviled in his home of Portugal and ridiculed in Spain. But his vision made it. The first time an expedition circumnavigated the world. The next person to do this, Sir Francis Drake, 60 years later. Now, warriors, you see, good sailors aren't made in calm seas. And even when the tempest is at its most turbulent, they always have their eyes to the horizon. Magellan's vision proved sound, even though it was daunting. He changed the world as we know it. Now the world today, ladies and gentlemen, is a far scarier time than Magellan's. Hostile weapons, intentions, and deeds proliferate and threaten us in the near term. The global climate crisis, more so than anything in our shared history of existence, threatens enterprise, our societies, and our environment now and for generations to come. But this is where you come in, a change agent. I am charging each of you with a solemn duty, this warrior spirit from Orm. I'm asking each of you to be bold, to stand up, to care about each other and our future, to be that bold agent of change. Let me not mince words. There is not an alternative to this. I know that each of you can do this, and I look forward to how you will implement, impact, and shape our future for the better. Okay. Three things, like I said, very easy. Intellectually curious. Practice kindness. Be a bold change agent. It's just three things. Curious, kindness, change. Now I want each of you, wherever you are, to enjoy this moment. 
You've earned it. Your ORM faculty and staff are proud of you. Your parents and caregivers are proud of you. And I am proud of every single one of you. Congratulations to the ORM School Class of 2020. On behalf of the Orm School Board of Trustees, I have been authorized to symbolically present this leather-bound Orm School Diploma to the 38 students of the class of 2020. Congratulations and good luck.